What's up with it, y'all? It's EJO E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. Yo, I got a new watch. Can y'all see this? I don't know if you can see this. This shit is fire. Have you guys ever heard of that app called Timu? T E M U? Have you ever heard of that? You know, all the packages come in an orange bag. I'm telling you, this watch is fucking dope. I bet I could tell somebody $400, but they don't know that I spent $3.50. I could be like, yo, yeah, my shit costs like $400. And only if they went on Timu, but man, nigga, you lying. Man, that costs like $325. But hey, nobody know that except you guys. All right. Anyway, what the hell? It's like I just threw that app some love. Anyways, um, all right. Aside from that, okay, my watch is dope, though. I really like it. The motherfucker clicking. That's how you know the shit's fake. But anyways, all right, the shit's dope, though, all right? So, <laughs> as you guys see, what I'm about to get up into is to 10 things that shocked us while visiting South Africa. This is from the channel, The Freedom Chasers. Um, I started doing things um, with South Africa, um, with the music in 2020 during the pandemic. So um, that was when I first learned about Nasty C and I learned about Nasty C. I ended up getting into, um, you know, some of the um, hip hop music out there. And then just came across some other videos where they were just talking about, um, you know, just South Africa, how life is out there and just the different things. And I ended up seeing one video and it pissed me off. I don't care. Every time I do videos on South Africa, I'm always going to talk about what? When I was younger, I didn't know shit about Africa. Only thing we knew about was nothing but negative negative really that's just on a whole of africa you know like it was straight up negative like the stuff you were learning was like i don't want to go over there type shit you know and like that was like when i was younger in elementary school but as i got older you know whatever that shit went out of my head and like you know i always wanted to go to africa but once i started listening to the music more and getting more in depth with stuff. It was like, that's like my dream trip, you know? Like, that's where I really want to go. But um, I ended up seeing like a video, you know, talking about Joe Berg and it was like, it was amazing because like the reaction I had, it, it lightweight pissed me off because it was like, I was watching shit as if like it was a while, but the only reason why it was a while to me was because I was more mad that I didn't know about this and how I was thinking that I didn't know the country was like that, you know? And I really think a lot of people need to see shit like that, you know, need to know that like Africa isn't what, what is looked at in certain places. I don't know how to fucking explain it. Just take it like this, all right? I watched some stuff about it and I just, I was blown away because it, I was just blown away because it pissed me off because how shit was. Why do you think a lot of times whenever Americans go out to Africa, if you guys notice, they come out with YouTube videos talking about how they're shocked or can you believe this? It's because how shit was. We don't know what the fuck it's like over there. And then like, it's, I ain't talking about it, all right? Fuck that. I ain't talking about that, all right? Well, we're about to get up into it's a 10 things that shock them, okay? I'm hoping that I can see some that's gonna shock me because I watched a lot of stuff and I'm sure I might not find anything that shocked me, all right? But hey, if it does, let's go, all right? So let's get up into that right now, all right? Let's go, y'all. Why? Well, I don't know. I keep putting out the peace sign as if I'm about to be out and shit. Anyways, done with that talk i mean let's talk i ain't about talking really i am talking right now but let's see what they about to talk about all right you feel me all right we've been to multiple areas downtown and just around our, uh, our place where we stayed where we smelled a lot of weed and people actually talking about how they smoke here oh they live in africa man shalom youtube family welcome back to the channel if you're new here welcome to the family 
In today's video, we'll be discussing the things that shocked us about South Africa. Also on this channel, we'll be traveling throughout the continent to show you the real Africa. So if you like this type of content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Let's get into it. So obviously we're in Johannesburg, so none of this stuff applies to everywhere else yeah. in South Africa because we haven't been yet. Hopefully we'll see some other places, but we're specifically talking about Johannesburg. The first thing we're gonna discuss is the similarities to America. Yeah. Now, when we were in Kigali, we actually met a Rwandan man who told us that South Africa is just like Europe. He was like, it's Europe. <laughs> so when we got here, obviously we've never been to Europe, so we would think that's a little different. But when we got here, it looks a lot like America. Like just yeah. the way the roads are, the way the buildings are, it's very, yeah. very similar. Um, we also noticed that the way people dress here is very, very similar to America. Just the jeans. Exactly. I'm telling you guys, like this was, like I was reading stuff, I'm not, I was seeing things on YouTube, and once again, I was just like them. Like, really? That's how it is? Yeah, all right. All right, anyway. The t-shirts, the regular stuff. Like hip hop culture. Right, when we were in Tanzania, like especially the women wore more traditional clothing um, yeah. in um, Rwanda as well. In Kenya, not so much. Kenya, they were wearing like jeans, t-shirts, stuff like that but we weren't exactly sure how it was gonna be here. Now, one thing that shocked me was how a lot of people have open face goals. Now, where I come from, Louisiana, I seen that a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mainly in like more of the uh, hood areas, ghettos, you'll see a lot of black people with goals in their mouth. I think yeah. it was more of a thing like in the 90s in America, so older people yeah. tend to have that. Yeah, permanent. So I don't know if y'all have it permanent here, but it was like that. So that was a, a real surprise. It really reminded me of home seeing it. Also, another thing would be the tattoos. Now, us going around the continent, we really didn't see a whole bunch of people with tattoos in these uh, countries that we've been to. Now, here, I see so many different people with tattoos. Like, everywhere you go is tattoo, 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 and it's very similar mm. to how it is in America. The last thing I want to talk about is the bucket hats. Now, in New York City, you will see a lot of people with those bucket hats, and it, and it came from like hip-hop culture. You'll see the guys with bucket hats and Timberlands. You see that here in the inner city also. A lot of people's fashion includes having a bucket hat, so I Shit, felt like I don't see that in Cali. A really cool one to see, for sure. I think they call it here Ispati or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I might be butchering it. I just said Cali because how he was just talking about New York and all that house out there, but yeah. But uh, that's what they call it here in South Africa. So the next thing we're gonna discuss is the cost of living. So with the food, it's definitely good prices. It's definitely not as expensive as a lot of other places. Um, it was shocking how much lower the prices are just because like, for, for instance, in Tanzania, there's all these markets on the road where you can get cheaper stuff. But here it's mostly grocery stores and the grocery stores are where the things tend to be more expensive. Yeah. But here it doesn't really seem to be the case. Also, um, the electronics here, when we were in Tanzania and places like that, they don't make those things there. They don't make a lot of electronics. So that stuff is being imported. So the cost of it is so much higher. So if you need like electronic devices, definitely getting them here in South Africa is cheaper. Yeah, for sure. Also, the housing was something that surprised us. Now our Airbnb that we're currently in is different from the one we spoke about in our last video. Mm -hmm. It's actually even cheaper. We're here for a month and we was only spending $690. And I'm saying this place is a two bedroom, it's fully furnished, have everything that you need. And we didn't month? pay that at any other Airbnb in any other country that we stayed in. We paid almost double in these other countries. So that's saying a lot when it comes to the housing here. So next up, we're gonna talk about load shedding. Now, in our research, we did see this. We knew that there was an electricity situation out here. Um, it was surprising though, how many times it went out. Yeah. Now, the first apartment really? that we were in that we discussed in the last video, it had a generator, so it would kick back on immediately, but it was still noticeable because the electricity would cut and then it like- uh, Come back on. Yeah, maybe right. like 10, 15 seconds, it would come back on. Yeah. But it was shocking how many times it did it throughout the day. Um, now in this apartment, they actually told me of an app that I downloaded that tells you when it cuts off for your yeah. area and depending on what stage it's in and all of these other things that <laughs> I had no idea mm -hmm. about, 
It can be one time a day, it could be two times a day, three times a day, four times a day. Yeah. And it could be anywhere from two hours to four hours. So really? it can be an inconvenience for people that work from home, especially if you don't have you know, portable chargers or something to keep your stuff charged. Um, this place actually has a backup on the Wi-Fi, so the electricity yeah. goes out, but the Wi-Fi stays on, so we're still able to work, so it's not really that bad. But it was shocking that it goes out so, so much. And also, I thought it was strange that in the last apartment and in this one, they have electric stoves. Yeah. All the other places we've been in Africa have all had gas stoves. And just because there's load shedding and it cuts off all the time, it was shocking to me that it was electric because, I mean, can obviously, yeah, the gas, you can still use it. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. God damn it, it's a commercial. The next topic we want to get into is how weed is decriminalized here. So we've been to multiple areas downtown and just around our, uh, our place where we stay, where we Man, I'm happy out here in California. Weed is legal out here. I know down south, man, what in Texas, Georgia and all that is not legal. So, yeah, I'm not going to get into it because you guys might think I'm a fucking weed head. All right. Anyways, it's legal out here, which is cool. But, yeah. I smelled a lot of weed and people actually talking about how they smoke here. Now, what's shocking is in other countries, it's a huge deal if you get caught with weed and, 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 uh, out in public or just on your person, you can go to jail for a long time. Here, it's, people do it so frequently and so just leisurely that it don't seem like the cops are just really enforcing it that much, like uh, giving people serious time for it. So it just shocked me that, that every, a lot, so many people do it here. The next topic I'm gonna get into is the liquor selection. Now, I'm not a heavier drinker or anything like that, but and I, I don't drink at all. She doesn't, <laughs> but I drink on occasions. And when I do drink, I usually want something that's really good. So being in these other countries, the liquor selection wasn't like, like it wasn't very good. I think <laughs> the best liquor I've seen in these other countries is like Jameson or something like that. And that's not really a high end liquor or top shelf liquor. In like America, any, anywhere else I've been like that. Shit. Here, I mean, you get some, a serious selection like Glenlivet, just high-end scotches, Hennessy, like anything that you can want literally that you can find in America, you can find also here. And things that are aged 18, 20, 25 plus years. So that was a great thing to see. So now I can just get the stuff that I actually want. And it's a great price also. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the size of the people. So the people <laughs> here are bigger, not like fat, but like taller, like especially the men. They're like taller and more muscular. Yeah. Like when we were in Tanzania, the men are kind of shorter and skinnier. Like they're kind of, I would say built like <laughs> teenagers, like in America. Um, so one time when we were in the hospital with our baby in Tanzania, I ran into this guy and he was like, oh, was that your husband? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he was like, the big guy. And he went like this, like, like he's like muscly or stocky. And I was like, no, I don't think that was my <laughs> husband. No, because he's not big. I'm not a huge dude. Yeah, and coming from America, like. I'm average. Yeah, when yeah. we see, think big in America, you think fat, because there's like people that are like, yeah, or like, cop or like swole, like yeah. you work out a lot. So like That's his arms are kind of big. He clearly works out, but I was like, he's not that big. But in Tanzania, the men were like really small. And not only Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, everywhere we went, even if the guys were taller, nobody was just like this big, yeah. you know, stout guys. Here, we've seen a lot of dudes that look like they lifting weights, they on their iron, right. they in the gym. And I think it's because in, in these other countries, they don't work out as much in like mm -hmm. gyms. Right. If you see somebody that's big in Tanzania or somewhere, they're out there in the field mm -hmm. and they're getting, you know, the, that build from that, right. not going to the gym. So it seems like here, more people work mm -hmm. out. Next up is housing. So we thought it was interesting that here you can pay for your stuff monthly. Like when we were in the previous apartment, they had mm -hmm. signs around there about renting a place and it was monthly payments. Yeah. When we were in like Tanzania, like they want you to do a six month lease. Like you need to Everywhere. and pay yeah. up front. Yeah. 
and you have to do a negotiation with them. Like some, we negotiated and got like three months or whatever like that. But month to month is rare. Like they want the money now. They want <laughs> they want to be paid for the duration of your stay at the Just beginning. Different all so over. So it was interesting to see that it's more like America here that you're paying month to month and you don't have to drop that large amount of money at once. And I think that was every country we visited, not just Tanzania. Man, wait till the end. I got something to say. And we've seen people talk about them like Ghana and stuff that haven't even paid longer for like up to a year. So it was just good that you had that option. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing when it comes to housing is they actually have places that have central air here. Mm -hmm. This is the only country that we've been to on the continent that has central air. We haven't seen it anywhere. So that was a pleasant surprise. And it's something that more developed nations obviously have would be the central air. Obviously, I would say, you know, even in America, everybody doesn't have central air, depending on how old your home is, yes. where you live, what, things like that. But like in like, especially public buildings, like if you go to restaurants, malls. There's no air conditioning in the Bay Area. So in San Francisco, there's no AC. In Oakland, no AC, unless you got money. Uh, see, I don't know. Where I live at, it get over 100 degrees. So I was going out in those places like, you got AC? But then, yeah. All right, anyways, this video is almost over. Things like that. There's air like that. And even in like public buildings and yeah. like even government buildings, like especially like in Tanzania, they all had the little Splits. mini split units yeah. on the wall. So like a bunch of them throughout the building. <laughs> yeah. Like, because you need a bunch of those. They, they go for like one room. Yeah. But... Yeah, it was it was interesting to see that they had this central air here. The next thing I want to get into is business opportunity. Now, being that this nation is more developed, you would think that you would have less opportunities than you would, for example, in other African countries that might be less developed. But here, you they still have a lot of opportunity to make money for business that haven't been started yet that I've just seen alone that I think I can start. So if you're a person that want to come here for business and start a business, you, the opportunities are endless and you can have a, you have a chance to make a lot of money. So uh, don't let South Africa being more developed deter you from wanting to come here and start a business. Unlike America where a lot of the market is saturated right now and uh, it's a lot of business that's been around for hundreds of years, you still you don't see that as much here. Mm -hmm. So the last thing we're going to discuss is the weather. So we thought it would be warmer than it is. It's It's been pretty cold since we've been here. Yeah. So I guess maybe it's like the winter here. Or somebody actually told it's us that coming we're coming up. into the winter yeah. here. So it's been a lot cooler. We're going to actually have to go buy some. They did this too. <laughs> Jack so winter club, because we've been in Tanzania and stuff. So we, it ain't been cold, cold. It's getting cold, cold yeah. here. Yeah. Another thing that men. comes with that cold weather is the dryness. Like yeah. when I tell you, my dr my skin has felt so dry since we've been here. It's been terrible. Dry to any no lotion, lotion. For sure. Right. Like my lips. I I don't know if y'all can see. I got some stuff on my lips right now. He done cracked his lip open oh in the same goodness. spot so many times. It, and just our skin, just everything has been a lot more dry since mm -hmm. we've been here. Right. And even in like when we was in Rwanda and Kenya, it wasn't as dry. It was cool just like it is mm -hmm. here, but I feel like it's a lot drier. So if yeah, there was more moisture in the yeah. air. I feel like the air is dry. All right, so look, this is what I have to say. That's a good video right there, man. And I guess what, they're just going around. I don't know if they're still out there because this is two months old, but they're doing what the hell I would want to do just going all over Africa. But anyways, basically what the hell they said at the beginning, South Africa is just like how America is. Who would have ever known, right? Us people over here, who would have ever known? Which is very unfortunate. But anyways, y'all, man, tell me how you guys feel about that video right there, man. Thank you for coming to my channel, man. I'm up out of here. I'm up out of here. I, I, I. I don't know why I just ended it like that.